Today I'm talking Brian De Palma movies, and I'm going to be going over my top 10 favorite films from the great director. So let's rock. Hi everyone, how you doing? Welcome back. I'm Fuzz. Uh, so Brian De Palma is the subject for today. Uh, he is a very interesting director with a fairly diverse and varied filmography. Now, up until a few years ago, uh, for me personally, uh, he was always one of those directors for whom I had a more casual uh, connection to his work. Uh, meaning I always noticed him popping up at different times over the years with films that I actually really liked and even watched numerous times. Uh, but I never really did a deeper dive uh, into his catalog uh, until I got back into collecting physical media just a few years ago uh, after a very long hiatus away from it. And since then, I've become a much bigger fan of his work, uh, which has coincided with me taking a greater interest uh, in the filmmaking process in general over the last few years. I think what also played a, a big part in me taking a renewed interest in De Palma's work uh, was seeing an excellent Brian De Palma documentary a couple years ago uh, called Simply De Palma. It is a feature-length documentary uh, where the man himself talks about his approach to filmmaking and goes through each one of his films and tells you what it was like making those films, his thought process, his approach, his techniques, his style. Uh, it really is a fantastic documentary. Um, it's about an hour and a half long and you can even buy it on Blu-ray. Um, I think it originally aired on Showtime and I don't know if it's out there streaming uh, right now or not. Uh, I'm sure you can find it somewhere digitally. It is a fantastic documentary that I would highly recommend for anyone who's interested in De Palma's work or even just the filmmaking process in general. I just love how De Palma approaches cinema in general. Uh, he can be very artsy uh, in how he frames and composes his shots, his panning, uh, his use of the split screen at times. He's just a very compelling director who you can tell really takes the art form seriously and who likes to experiment, which I, I think is always a good thing. Experimentation is how you get happy accidents. Now, I don't think anybody would deny that uh, he's got a lot of Hitchcock in him in his style, right? Uh, he'd be the first one to, to admit his Hitchcock influence. In fact, he does uh, on that documentary I was just talking about. But at the same time, he can also take on chameleon-like qualities, uh, adapting his style, his approach, his tone uh, to fit the film and fit the story so that he's serving the film and the story first and foremost. So today I'm going over my personal top 10 favorite films from Brian De Palma, uh, along with a few honorable mentions at the end. Uh, so let's get right into it. Starting off at number 10 is Snake Eyes from 1998. Uh, this is a film I actually just watched the other night in preparation for this list. Uh, I hadn't actually seen it for probably close to 20 years. Uh, now what's interesting about this is I had seen the film several times before, but it's just been a long time. Uh, so I was kind of curious to see what I would think of this film after all these years. Now, I used to be pretty lukewarm on this film. I liked it, but I wasn't like blown away by it or anything at the time. But returning to it all these years later, after not having seen it for a while, I actually ended up liking the film a lot more than I realized. Uh, it's a great little kind of murder mystery thriller. Uh, you got Nicolas Cage here, Gary Sinise, uh, you know, really good cast, good acting. And... Uh, really artsy in, in how De Palma approaches this, right? Uh, take, for example, the opening shot for this film. Uh, the first like 10 or 15 minutes is set up as one long continuous shot uh, as they're kind of setting the table for the movie. Um, so that's like the first 10 or 15 minutes of the film before the film really kicks into gear uh, and takes off after that. So if you're a De Palma fan and you've never seen this one uh, or it's been a while since you've seen it, uh, I'd recommend checking it out or, or revisiting it. Next up at number nine, we have Body Double from 1984. Great uh, neo-noir kind of erotic thriller, uh, murder mystery. So uh, yeah, I, I, this is a great film. Uh, this is one that I actually saw myself for the first time only about a year and a half ago. It's one of those films that I'd never seen over the years. Now I hear it's going to be getting a 4K release uh, in the near future. Uh, this is the indicator Blu-ray that I have here. So yeah, I was a late bloomer on this film. I didn't get around to seeing it until later in life, but I really enjoyed it and, uh, you know, kind of wished I had seen it 
a lot sooner. I'd heard great things about it over the years, but for whatever reason, it just never gotten around to it. So in a way, this is almost De Palma kind of paying tribute to Alfred Hitchcock. And you can very much see the uh, the Hitchcock influence in this film. Uh, you see a little bit of the DNA from Vertigo or Rear Window or whatnot in here. Uh, so yeah, if you're a Hitchcock fan as well, um, and you've never seen this, yeah, definitely give this one a try at some point. For number eight, I chose 1987's The Untouchables. Awesome film. Amazing cast. Sean Connery, Kevin Costner, uh, Robert De Niro in this, giving a very, very uh, memorable performance as Al Capone. Now, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? The baseball bat? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's not a scene that that people tend to forget very easily. So, uh, but I've I've always loved this movie. Thought it was a really well done film. And uh, I mean, let's face it, nobody does gangster films quite like Brian De Palma. Am I right? Uh, so yeah, this is awesome film and uh, got a great 4K release last year. So make sure you check this one out if you've never seen it before, uh, uh, or if you've seen it but you haven't seen the 4K. Yeah, maybe think about picking up this 4K at some point. It's uh, I. I was really happy that I did. So, um, so yeah, Untouchables, number eight. At number seven, we have 1996's Mission Impossible. Uh, you know, sometimes it's almost easy to forget that, that De Palma is the one who kicked this whole uh, film series off, right? Um, and I thought he did an amazing job uh, capturing the essence of the original TV show with this while still moving it forward into the, the modern era. Um, so yeah, now this is, admittedly, this is not like the later Mission Impossible films, which are much more action-packed or whatnot. This one leans a little bit more into the espionage angle and the, and the drama angle a little bit more than, than maybe some of the later Mission Impossible films. But um, I've always enjoyed this film. It was a, I remember when it came out, it was a really big deal when it came out. It did really well at the box office, if I remember right. So, uh, but I've always enjoyed this film and uh, thought that he just did a fantastic job uh, recreating uh, the Mission Impossible world here. Uh, great cast. You got Tom Cruise in this, Bing Rames, uh, John Voight, of course. Uh, so yeah, uh, love this film. And this isn't even necessarily my favorite Mission Impossible film, but uh, I've always thought uh, what De Palma did with this was, was excellent. Uh, it's just a well-done film. So yeah, uh, Mission Impossible for number seven. Coming in at number six, we have Carlito's Way from 1993. Uh, this is one I actually saw in the theater when it first came out, so it, it made an impression on me back then. Uh, always liked it. I was on a big, big Al Pacino kick back then. Um, I've always loved Al Pacino. I'm not as into him now as I used to be, but at this time, when this film came out, I was watching anything and everything Al Pacino. So, uh, and I really enjoyed it. It's a great film. Now you see, I've got the 4K here, but uh, Arrow Video has got a new uh, 4K release coming out uh, in about a week and a half, from at least from the time I'm recording this video. Uh, and I do have that pre-ordered as well. I can't wait to get the uh, the chunky box sets. Uh, I love Arrow's chunky box sets. And uh, when I saw that they were doing it, giving this film the the Royal Arrow treatment, uh, I just couldn't pass it up, and I jumped on the pre-order. So really looking forward to that. But um, this is such a great film. Uh, you know, Sean Penn in this. He's such a weasel, but you gotta love his performance. Uh, also great performances from uh, John Leguizamo and Penelope Ann Miller. Uh, yeah, just a really well done film. And I've always considered this uh, almost kind of a, a spiritual sequel uh, to Scarface, even though it's, it's not the same story. Um, they really do, it really does make a good uh, companion film uh, to Scarface, I've found. So, uh, but yeah, love Carlito's Way, great film. Getting into the top five now, uh, this was a little bit trickier than I, I thought it was going to be. It was hard leaving Carlito's Way out of the top five because it's such a great film. Uh, but when I sat and thought about it and worked through this whole thing in my mind, I realized that, that really this list couldn't go any other way. So uh, for number five, we have The Great Dress to Kill. Kino Lorber 4K release. Uh, great 4K, by the way, and just a great film. Uh, Nancy Allen, Michael Caine, uh, Angie Dickinson. Uh, classic, classic uh, kind of a... Well, it's almost like an American Jalo, you know? Like, it's, it's hard to believe that Brian De Palma uh, wasn't influenced by Italian horror for this film, or by Dario Argento, right? I mean, he says he wasn't, but I don't know. Uh, it's definitely got a lot of Hitchcock influence in it again. 
Um, and it's a great just kind of a, well, it's kind of an erotic thriller as well. It's a great murder mystery with a, with a pretty big twist at the end. So, uh, and, and I might add, probably not the most politically correct twist uh, at the end these days. But, you know, I don't care about that. These films, the way I see it, these are snapshots in time. And they reflect the culture uh, at the time the films were made. So I don't get too wigged out about stuff that older films that, that don't conform to current standards of political correctness that I don't care about that. But anyway, so if you've never seen Dress to Kill, awesome film, I'd, I'd highly recommend it. Uh, yeah, so that's my number five. By the way, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, do me a favor and consider subscribing to the channel and hit that bell notification as well so you can always be alerted when I'm posting stuff that you might be interested in. Also, don't forget to like the videos as well. It really helps with the uh, channel's visibility out there. Uh, thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. Coming in at number four, I talked about this uh, not too long ago, uh, The Fury. Uh, this is a great film. I know this is probably a little higher on my list than it probably would be for others, but uh, I just really like this film. I talked about this recently in another video I did on underrated films, and I would definitely consider this one underrated. Uh, underrated enough to actually make my top four, right? Uh, this film deals with telepathy and a couple kids that have powers. Uh, it's got a, a similar thing to Carrie, but it's not exactly the same story. There is some differences, some key differences between this one and Carrie. But if you like Carrie, uh, I think you'd really like this one. It's a, it's a fun film uh, with a great cast, Amy Irving, Kirk Douglas, uh, Andrew Stevens. So uh, yeah, check out The Fury if you haven't yet. Okay, getting into the top three here for number three, and this might trip a few people out who would probably have it at number one, but not for me. Uh, this is Scarface, uh, 1983 absolute classic film. Uh, in my opinion, one of Al Pacino's best performances ever, along with Sin of a Woman. Uh, but this is, this is up there pretty high for me. Uh, so yeah, I love this film. Uh, just an epic uh, crime saga, I guess, if you will. Um, and I think most of you guys already know what this film is and how great it is. Uh, great performances. I think this is the first film Michelle Pfeiffer ever appeared in, if I'm not mistaken. But it's got a great cast and it's just such a well-done film. Uh, classic, classic stuff. So yeah, Scarface at number three. At number two, I've got Carrie. Now you're gonna have to pardon the reflection. I didn't feel like taking my steelbook out of the uh, plastic case for this. So I, I try to hold it so it's not too bad. But anyway, I love this. If you haven't seen this 4K, by the way, it is awesome. Fantastic 4K of Carrie from Scream Factory. And again, another one of these films that's, you know, it's a classic film. We all know what this is. Uh, great uh, performances by uh, Sissy Spacek and uh, Piper Laurie, Amy Irving. So uh, John Travolta's in this, Nancy Allen, who I, I love Nancy Allen, always had a, a big thing for Nancy Allen. So, and, and apparently De Palma did too. Uh, you know, he, he had her in quite a few of his films. So um, yeah, that's it. Number two, Carrie. And for my favorite Brian De Palma film of all time, 1981's Blowout. And this is a fantastic film, just an amazing film. Uh, you really, I love the, uh, it's got a real heavy analog nature to it. Uh, you know, it's fun watching the, the old uh, audio and video stuff from, from the old analog perspective of the late 70s and early 80s, uh, watching them cut film and audio together and whatever the old fashioned way. So, uh, but this is a, a great uh, thriller. Uh, John Travolta, Nancy Allen is awesome in this. John Lithgow is, is amazing in this. Uh, just a fantastic film all the way around. And uh, this is a great 4K. Uh, if you've never uh, picked this up yet, I would highly recommend picking up the Criterion 4K here. Um, it even comes with, uh, I believe it's De Palma's first film as a bonus feature, Murder a la Mode. That's actually included with this. So you actually get two films for the price of one. Uh, the Murder All the Modes on Blu-ray, of course, as a bonus feature. It's not on 4K, just Blowout is. But um, it's a great release with some great bonus features and uh, just a really, really good film. Uh, easily, for me, the best film De Palma's ever done. So number one, Blowout. Okay, and moving on to a few honorable mentions. I don't have very many honorable mentions this time. Uh, I kept it pretty pretty small on the honorable mentions, but this is a, a significant one, and that is the movie uh, Sisters. Uh, great, great film. Let's see, when did this come out? Hang on, I got to look at my computer here. Ah, 1972 for this, and this is uh, Margot Kidder is in this one. And uh, this is a weird, trippy film. 
Uh, but it's a great kind of a mystery where you don't really know what's going on at first. Uh, it's, you watch it the first like half hour. I, if I can remember right, I think it's like the first half hour or so you're like watching this thing going, where the hell is this movie going? Uh, and then it kind of, kind of takes a turn and, and gets a little bit more, uh, intriguing and a little bit more bizarre. So, um, yeah, if you've never seen this one, uh, it's a lesser known film by De Palma, but I, I really thought it was a well done uh, film uh, for one of his early works. So uh, check it out, sisters. Okay, and the remaining honorable mentions I don't actually own on physical media uh, yet. <laughs> That's kind of a work in progress, at least with the Palma films. Uh, and I've only got three more to mention here. And, and the first one is uh, Brian De Palma's venture into sci-fi, and that is Mission to Mars uh, from the year 2000. Uh, now this is the movie itself is okay. I, I think the movie's pretty interesting, but I'll admit some of the CGI, some of the effects don't really stand the test of time now. But it's got a great cast. It's got Don Cheadle in there. It's got Gary Sinise in there again. And if you've always wanted to see what would happen if Brian De Palma directed a science fiction film, well, this is the one to check out just for that reason alone. I don't think he has anything else that's sci-fi. Correct me if I'm wrong out there, if there's something I'm missing. Uh, but so yeah, uh, Mission to Mars from 2000. Um, also, uh, Raising Kane, uh, fantastic uh, tour de force for John Lithgow, uh, who plays this guy with uh, multiple personalities. And I'll just leave it at that. But it is a nice, uh, it's a great thriller. Um, yeah, kind of a psychological thriller, I guess I'd say. Uh, it's one I actually saw in the theater when it first came out. Uh, and I, and I liked it. It's, so it's kind of, it's psychological thriller, horror. Um, but yeah, uh, check it out if you get a chance. Raising Cain. And then the last one I wanted to mention was Casualties of War, uh, from 1989. And that stars Michael J. Fox, uh, Sean Penn. Really, really good film, even though it's not really the kind of film I normally get into myself. I'm not a big war movie guy overall. I don't collect a whole lot of war movies, and I probably won't even buy this one myself for that reason. But for those of you out there who are into war movies, if you do like a, a good war movie, uh, Casualties of War is excellent. Uh, Michael J. Fox just does such a, an amazing job with the role. And from what I understand, uh, apparently that was quite a, a challenging thing for him to do. Um, I guess Sean Penn went all method on him and, and kind of treated uh, Michael J. Fox like shit on the set. That's what I've heard. I, I think that was, uh, I think it was in the De Palma documentary, he indicated something like that. Basically, uh, Sean Penn was like in character the whole time and treating Michael J. Fox like Sean Penn's character treats Michael J. Fox's character in the film. So uh, apparently that that had to have been a little difficult for Michael J. Fox, whom I love, uh, to endure. But a uh, great film if you've never seen it. Um, for me, I've seen it. It's been years since I've seen it. Uh, and it's probably not the kind of film I would watch very often. But it is an excellent film uh, for the type of film that it is. So uh, check it out if you get a chance. So that about wraps it up for my favorite Brian De Palma films. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. What are your favorites? I'd love to hear what your favorites are. Give me your own top 10 or even just a top five. I definitely love hearing from you guys and interacting with you guys in the comments. So uh, so yeah, make sure you, you leave your thoughts on this uh, below. Don't forget to subscribe, like the video, all that good stuff. Uh, thank you so much for watching today. I really appreciate it. And I'll see you soon. <laughs>